So I've been absolutely loving my 4K Anywhere X17 R2. I've been using it pretty much daily. Absolutely love this machine. But being a small channel and not having bottomless pockets, when I bought this laptop, I only got it with a 512GB SSD and 16GB of RAM. As I'm probably going to be keeping this for myself, I think it's time to max it out. So tonight, we're going to be installing 64GB of DDR5 RAM. And we'll also be installing 4TB of SSDs. Now because this laptop has got two Gen 4 M.2 slots, I'm going to be installing two Gen 4 drives. The OS I'm going to put on the faster SN850. This is a more expensive drive, but it's incredibly fast, about 7,000 read and 7,000 writes. And for my games drive, I'm going for a slightly cheaper SN770, which is still a great drive at about 5,000 read and 5,000 writes. It's still very quick, and for games, that's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to shut this down and make a start upgrading it. Now, there are a couple of pitfalls, so make sure you stick around. But for now, let's open her up. So first things first, power down your laptop, turn it upside down. Now I've put it on a old mouse mat, just so I don't scratch the lid. So that's something you want to be very careful of with these laptops. And then we're going to remove the base plate. Now these anywheres are very easy to remove. They're all just Phillips screws and you've got four here and then four at the front. And as you unscrew a couple of these screws, it does start popping this plate up to make it easy to remove. Whenever you're doing any work on laptops, make sure you use a decent toolkit. Now I'll put a link in the description down below for all the tools and all the parts used in this video, just in case you need to use the same. So there we go. You'll hear these screws click because they're captive and it's pushing the, the actual plate away. You can always use a spudger or get your nails underneath just so that you can just pry the actual base plate up and it'll just come away nicely. And we're away. So we are inside the laptop. We've got our SSD. This is the 512 gigabyte with a heatsink. And we're going to be replacing that with a two terabytes. And then we're going to be putting in a second SSD in this slot for a, a games drive. Now, if you've got yourself a decent SSD in your primary slot, you can save yourself a lot of hassle by just buying yourself a nice, decent size second SSD, and then you're done. But obviously, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be cloning our primary drive and removing this 512 gigabyte. And we're going to use cloning because that's a very quick and easy way to do this. So the first issue that you're going to see whenever you're doing some work on these and adding yourself a second SSD. Now Dell do provide you the screw for the actual SSD you're putting into your second slot, but they do not provide you with a heat plate. Now what I've basically got here is just a very cheap heat plate off Amazon. Again, it will be a link in the description. And I have tested this already. There's a video on our Mash Extra channel where we've tested this on these Gen 4 drives. And this dropped the temperature by about 10 degrees over a Gen 4 drive without a heat plate. So they are very good and they're very cheap. Alternatively, you could phone Dell uh, and spend ages on the phone with them and they will sometimes send you or sell you a second heat plate. But they're definitely needed on these Gen 4 drives. So I'm gonna just remove the screw from the SSD on our second slot. Now, because I'm gonna clone this to a two terabyte drive, I'm gonna just put that in the second slot just to run my cloning software. Now, before I start working on the laptop, I am just gonna unplug the battery. You've got a little pull tab at the back of the battery connector, and I'd just like to use a pry tool as well just to help pull it out. Be very careful, because you can damage this cable if you yank it too hard or at a wrong angle. I'm now gonna install the SN850 into my second slot so that I can clone this drive. Now, you could just install it straight into the first slot and do a fresh install, and we did do that last year when we upgraded our X17R1, but cloning is a lot easier because not only do you get all the up-to-date drivers from your original drive, but if you've started filling your original drive, all those files come across to your new drive. And I'm gonna screw that back in. I'm not gonna bother with the heat plate just yet. Okay, so now that I've installed the drive, I'm gonna pop the base plate back on, boot back into Windows, and I'm gonna use some cloning software to clone it across. Now, I reached out to Eesus and they kindly lent me their to-do backup software, which does also does the cloning, which is very kind of them. Now, I'll put a link in the description to Eesus software. We have become an affiliate for them. So if you do use our link, we do get a small kickback from Eesus if you purchase that software, and it does help the channel at no extra cost to you. So we've booted back into Windows 11, and we're gonna open up our Eesus to-do backup software. Once that's opened, we're gonna go to the Tools drop-down, and we're gonna choose System Clone. 
Now, because it already knows our C drive is the actual operating system, all we're gonna choose is the target drive, and that's the new drive we've just inserted. And as you can see, there's nothing on this drive, so I'm gonna click the little checkbox and click Next. Now, the important thing is, obviously, we've got a two terabyte drive, and the original was only one terabyte. So we're gonna change Edit the Disk Layout. So what we need to do here is increase all the extra space of this two terabyte drive to be fully utilized in this one partition. Now, obviously, if you don't wanna do that, if you wanna have a second partition on the C drive, you can just leave it and add that once you're in Windows. But I like to have my entire C drive, one partition. Once I've dragged that out, I made it the entire size, just click Proceed. It does everything for you and it tells you when it finishes. Because we're on SSDs, it's incredibly quick. Okay, with the drive cloned, I've opened the case back up disconnected my battery, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna remove my original drive. So I'm gonna take the plate and the drive off, and then I'm gonna just split those apart. You see, there's my original 512 drive. So I'm gonna put that safely to one side, in case I ever wanna sell the laptop in the future. I'm gonna remove this from the slot two. pop the plate on and I put it into my slot one and I'm going to take my SN770 which is going to be my sort of game drive in my slot two and I'm going to take just the very cheap plate that I bought from Amazon I put the thermal tape on it already pop that over the top and they give you bands. They give you a couple of bands. I'm only going to put one on. But this keeps the heat plate on the actual SSD. Now, before I actually install this drive, I want to give you the second sort of little pitfall that you could make when you're buying the SSDs for the actual machine. I will zoom in in a second, but this is very, very low profile, the way that you actually install these SSDs into these slots. Now that means two things. One is there's very little room for the heatsink on top, so never buy an SSD with the built-on heatsink. It will not fit. You need one of these slim plates. And two, do not buy a double-sided SSD. So as far as I'm aware, that's anything bigger than a two terabyte drive will be double-sided and there'll be chips on the back and it will not fit. Those chips will be touching this motherboard and you'll, you'll bend the actual SSD getting it on here and probably do some damage. So this is why I've got two terabytes in both of these slots, giving me a total of four, that is maxing out the SSDs on this model. So be careful, make sure you get single-sided drives, uh, and I believe most two terabyte drives, such as these SN850s and SN770s from Western Digital. There we go, and they fit perfectly. So there we are, that's our four terabytes of uh, storage installed. Lastly, I want to just actually do the RAM. You'll notice on the RAM, we've just got some minor tape on there just for the thermals. So what I'm basically gonna do is I'm just gonna take out my eight gigabyte stick. So pull back this mylar, and then you see the two tabs here for the RAM. If you pull those out, you'll see the DIMM will pop up. And once it pops up, just put it straight out. And we're gonna replace that with our 32 gigabytes of Crucial DDR5. This is starting to come down in price now, so this actually didn't break the bank too much, but it means you know I've maxed out the RAM, I'm never gonna have to worry about this again now, and I do a lot of video editing on this machine, so you know I wanted the most I could put in here. And there we go, you can see the crucial chip. Now when you go to put the RAM in, you'll see there's a notch in the middle of the stick. Line that up with the notch on the actual slot. It's usually very straightforward. You'll see it because it's not quite even. Pop the chip in at a very slight angle, push it in so that it's seated, and then you're gonna push it down, and you'll hear those clips pop in place. That is now locked in, and we're ready to go. And that is done. That is our first RAM stick. Now we're gonna do the second. So lift in the, the mylar tape, pop the my little clips. You'll notice this chip's the other way round to the first one. So take that out, put it to one side, I get my other 32 gigabyte chip, I'm gonna line it up, so notice it's the opposite way round to the first one I did. Push it back in, seat it, push it down, we're away. That's 64 gigabytes installed. Right, we're done. 
All I've got to do now is plug my battery back in. And I've now got four terabytes of SSD storage and my 64 gigabytes of RAM. I'm gonna put my cover back on. Again, we're just gonna do the opposite of what we did a second ago. So just locate the lugs, push it down, and we can screw it back in. I'm not gonna waste your time screwing all of these screws in for this video, but just make sure when you take the screws out and originally keep them in order because the front screws are a slightly different length to the rear screws and you don't wanna put the wrong ones in the wrong place. Okay, that's it. So I'm gonna boot back into Windows. Start enjoying my new laptop. Okay, so booting back into Windows and opening File Explorer, you'll see straight away our C drive is now 1.8 terabytes free space. So basically our two terabyte drive formatted with all our data on it. But you will notice our second drive hasn't appeared. And that's because it's a new drive, it's not been initialized. So what we need to do is we need to right click on the Windows flag and from there you choose Disk Management. And when Disk Management loads up, it will automatically pop up and ask you to initialize the disk. You click OK, and then you right click on your disk one. You want a new simple volume. You follow the prompts, making sure that you use the entire space, unless of course you want to partition it. You have it as the D drive. And then lastly, I usually change the name. In my case, I'm gonna call this storage. You could call it games, whatever you like, your second drive. And then you finish. It will then do a quick format. And now your second drive shows. You've got four terabytes of fast SSD disk space. So totally maxing out this X17. That should last me for quite some time. Now also we've got our 64 gigabytes of RAM installed. I uh, just want to quickly do a test of Geekbench 5. Now the single core score doesn't improve at all pretty much between the 16 gigabytes I had initially and the 64 gigabyte kit I've got installed now. The multi-core score has a massive improvement from 12,400 to 13,800. A really big improvement just by adding that extra RAM. Now 64 gigabyte is gonna be overkill for most people. I would recommend most people go for 32 gigabytes. But as I do a lot of video editing and I've run a fair few VMs and other bits of software that's quite heavy on this laptop, I wanted to max it out. Overall, for the cost of doing this, with these results, I'm incredibly pleased. And this laptop now should last me for quite some time. If you've got any questions or any thoughts, put them in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thanks for watching.